Yeah. 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 Yep. This wasn't here. My wife worked in this room, and uh, there's several women that worked in here, and this was this all a saying the type for all the books. And so Lorraine would give a tour. I don't think this door, this wall was here. Yes, but it was. Was it? Yes. But Lorraine would give a tour, and she'd show pre press, and she'd come in here where these three windows are at. If you come this way, you can see right in the art room. This is where she'd catch us doing crap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Over there it was. That was the art room. <laughs> Do you remember when we had to clean everything up when CBS came through? Uh, yeah. I remember we had all the walls was covered with their art. Yeah. Well, you and we were told imagine. when 60 Minutes came to answer any questions, we had nothing to hide. So a woman wrote with the cameraman, she comes walking in here, she comes right to the middle of the room and she freezes and starts looking at all the walls and she's like, how can you guys? I was just like, how do we function in this, with this visual <laughs> horrors around you, you know? <laughs> She's like horrified. Was that the Ed Bradley thing? Yes. Yeah. You know what Gary had on his door on purpose? What? Cabbage Patch doll flies across the room and kills owner. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> flies across the room. Yeah. I he knew what they were going to say. You guys had set up the nativity set with the Godzillas. That was like the... Very Godzilla. Do you remember the mannequin? We had her, Jessica. Yes. And we would dress her for season. Sexy, always sexy, like Halloween. Yeah. So we had her uh, painted up anatomically correct. Uh, anatomically correct. That's right. Put some nipples on her. Oh, wow. <laughs> so if she had some see through on, you could see through it. Yeah, we had to take, you had to take that down. Uh, I'm recording on the Jeff That's okay, it. somebody Jeff, needs to Jeff know. Jeff bring nipples for her, Jessica. You were the one, I remember you scuffled those. Paint them up? You should have seen what Jeff did when he first got a hold of Photoshop. <laughs> 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 you should have seen what Jeff did when he first got a hold of Photoshop. I everybody else to I, I, I <laughs> get it. <laughs> oh, man. But I think what's neat is you can see exactly where each one of us were. Yeah. Exactly. Well, nothing's changed. I know. This is, here's the... Parkinson. Yeah. He did that. Bad. Bad. Parkinson. So we've been playing darts and we get mad and we lose, we turn out our walls, we paint on an illustration board. And so then we have a push pin. And sometimes you turn around and maybe you just throw your darts on three of them at your wall. And sometimes they would, luckily, most of the darts hit on the white lace night. I mean, a white illustration board with not paint on the, the borders. Uh, every once in a while, I'd dark a kid inside. So if 
anybody, if you find some old paintings and you see a little hole in the garden, I remember one time I just do all my garden to my wall over there. Well, because your basic set cover had a hole in it from the dark. Um, uh, yeah? Yeah, when you sold it at Gen Con. And uh, I remember Keith turned around one time and just threw his dark in this general direction. And our mannequin just goes out there and one bit, one bit of her to head, so she had a little hole over there. <laughs> We're like, oh God, we hit Jessica. <laughs> I remember uh, <laughs> it started um, working on like. Well, I never knew that smell. Back you know, you know, and it's like, that's that's that smells like really the throwback, isn't it, Larry? Yeah, like, like, yeah, well, yeah, I remember burning models when I was a kid. And it smells exactly like that. It's like taking me back. I'm like, these guys smell like. <laughs> Yeah, this is that. And then I look over and over and on uh, Clyde's, who had those tall oh, lights. Put out a lot of put out a lot of heat, and he had sitting on top of a uh, Boba Fett ship, yeah. and it was smoking. It was smoking. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, they brought in these big lamp things, and they had a it's high voltage or what? They had like three thousand yeah, watt bulbs. You could probably cook something on top of it. No, they were hot. They were hot. Yeah, this is weird. To so was this where you guys were the whole time, Larry? Yeah. Well, well, when we first got here, we moved in here. here. <laughs> we moved in here probably around uh, eighty-four. No, you were here when I was here in eighty-three. No, I mean moved in. Oh, in here? Yeah. yeah, I think. I think we moved in this area here around eighty-four, and we stayed right there. Keith, uh, Wallace, Jeff, from eighty-four up until I left. Keith and I left in 87, I think, in, a, in the summer. I sort of had to because yeah, I was going to do the covers of y'all's next book. And then that's the that's Tracy called me up and said, uh, you better put in two weeks' notice advice because uh, Bantam is going to tell Lorraine that you're doing the next cover. Like, oh, my God. So, so Keith and I were well, trying to go out you? together. Mm -hmm. And so I told Keith, I said, i got to go. And I said, well, I'm not ready. I said, well, they don't know you're quitting yet. I said, I'll give my two weeks notice. And, I, and he said, well, I need to work another month anyway. So then we went out and found a studio downtown. And uh, so I went ahead and, and quit and got set up. And then he quit shortly after well, late September. I quit like in probably July or something. I don't know when y'all's first show would be from that after that. And then he, I think, joined us in September or quit. And then we worked there, worked here for another year and a half in town. And then we moved. We would have the disgusting party over there. The and disgusting party. And everybody would come over and we would, we would play games all night and drink, cigars, and smoke drink cigars, and, and um, play music. And just all night. And our studio was stuck so bad the next day. <laughs> the more we left, Larry said, if there's any way you can. You know, no. get that. I really love to do yeah, the covers for that book. Yeah. Yeah. And we were like, I don't know. I'm just a big New York publisher. And, and Tracy and I were kind of odd. And they said, well, we'll ask. And so we got out there and they took us out to dinner at this fancy New York restaurant. And the editor comes over and he goes, Is there any way you can persuade Larry Elmore to do the cover for your book? And Tracy's like, Well, I don't know. We have to ask. He was like there. No help there. And then we'll do it for a while. Oh, you do? Jeff had a bookcase here. Jeff had a bookcase. And they bring in the model. And they bring in the model. Do you remember? Yes, it was a male screen. Or a male screen. Yes, it was a male screen. And we were looking. We were kind of looking at the cover. I saw him walking down the street. And I was like, I called Larry and I said, I just saw Joram. That was the guy, the hero of our book. And then Larry saw him, and he goes, you're right, that looks exactly like him. So, but neither of us knew him, so I said, Larry, well, you've got to ask him if he'll model. And Larry's going, no, he'll think I'm some creepy old man. <laughs> and I said, well, I can't ask him. And so David, my son, he asked him. And David said, oh, I'll ask him. So David asked him, and it turned out he was a male stripper. And so 
he asked or Larry, you know, what kind of costume and stuff he should bring to mom. He was the standard cop costume. Larry told him it was a fantasy. Didn't he show up in black leather and yeah, yeah, wrong type of fantasy. And uh, also I think it's a skill I use, or his buddy, he had a friend with here, I used in the shadow run. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh really? He was drop dead yeah. gorgeous. Well, oh my gosh. Not a brain in his head. <laughs> no. I mean, he dumb. was really still. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Lake Geneva was the, uh, where Chippendale uh, was a show. Oh, yeah, yeah, but Chippendale's were oh, came from here. Yeah, yeah, but the Sugar Tech, this was the first male strip club with right right female strip yeah. club. Yeah. Yeah. And it was started by, what's her name, Dana Montana. Yeah. Dana Montana. Yeah. 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 She was a former yeah. Playboy Bunny, yeah. and she got some yeah. men yeah. and handed yeah. yeah. them like the bunny. He'd start looking around. Your hotel was the old Playboy. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. really. we, we took Jeff to his first trip. Uh -oh. We went to Beloit to, to a hobby store on our way back. Clyde had never been to a strip club. Jeff what? was in the one. And uh, so we stopped through the place called the Clown Lounge. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah. somewhere over there. Yeah. I lived out and there. And it was nice. it was the roughest I mean <laughs> they stripped all the way. There wasn't a lot of rules. Did they wear makeup? Um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so we took Jeff over there and Jeff we cried and we said, Okay, don't buy drinks. If you buy drinks for the girls, it's gonna cost you a whole lot of money. We went back 20 minutes to Clyde already had drinks lined up. Jeff brought us right. Oh, God. Oh, God. I paid this girl the next to give Jeff some extra. Well, Clyde and his little hair all up. Clyde and all the money because they ran out of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Clyde and then every time we go to blow up, they Clyde and Jeff like, well, we're stuck on the cloud land. I guess we could. <laughs> it was fun. But the oldest, I was, Clyde is a few months older than me, so, but I was, see, more like, I guess, more like the oldest. I was only about 35. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you seem like an old guy at that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we were. I was one of the oldest. Yeah. Uh, but I and uh, Kim, Kim Jean Black and Jim Mohan, I think. Was well, when I came to work here, I was 33, and I looked around like they were having a birthday party for the head of the computer department, and he's turning 21. Yeah. <laughs> it was like oh, everybody was yes, young. Yeah. Everybody was younger. Yeah. So I, if you see somebody like Carrie or maybe Will Neebly yeah. or something. They're the closest people to our age. Everybody else is kids. Mm -hmm. And you were like 16 or something. I, I started at the company when I was 19. 19. Really? <laughs> you were know, a kid? 20 and 10 years old. Skip Williams, he was a kid? Yeah. I was, actually, I was actually promoted from the shipping department to the art department. That's, you know, I think I'm one of the, just yeah. kind of a rare bird in that kind of world. But you did art. I was, I was, was in the right place stuff, at the yeah. right time, you know, that's just what it was. Dave Sutherland wanted to see my stuff be heard. I like to draw. And I went home, I drew three pictures, you know, and I brought them in and he looked at them and he's like, That's good now. It's his first time I ever inked a drawing. You know, two ink drawings, one pencil drawing. He's like, How about if we buy these two? How long are you doing this? How are you doing a pistol? Gangbusters. Yeah. Yeah, that was really, really good. Yeah, I like that pistol. Kids coming up from the ship. Matthew's got it now. Yeah. Yeah. It actually still exists. Wow, that's it's cool. one of the few pieces. Well, I remember the, the, one of his first drawings. I thought, that kid is talented, you know. You know, didn't have an art degree or anything. No, high school, that's it, you know. And I and I wasn't even aspiring to be an artist. I just liked to draw. I wanted to, I kind of wanted to be an artist, but I didn't think, I didn't have any avenue. Well, he does a great map. Some of the maps he did are like, yeah, they would just Coffee after food. after a while it's like yeah. let's make these are boring. Let's start yeah. adding yeah. things yeah. to them, and then designers, you know, they come and like, yeah, can you do something yeah. neat here? And I'm like, yeah, and you just start building on that, you know. Dennis Kauf was a big uh, influence with the lick and stick stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dennis Kauf to give you paper and you can make anything out of it. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. another man. Give him a pair of scissors, some glue, and some cardboard, and he can build you anything in the world. Well, yeah, you can like Every time for a Halloween, we come in, we come in a full bone transformer or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> Where'd you get that out there? <laughs> 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 Jeff, how long did you work there before you decided you wanted to do art? Uh, <laughs> <laughs>
Five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. Are you still here with Watsy Bottom? Oh, he was there through Watsy. Oh, he went through. Jeff was a Watsy employee. Out of all of us, he turned into a Watsy employee. And he did. He's the only guy that's did art in all three editions. Uh, like, like as an employee, he did some third editions. Well, they, uh, I think it's true about Jeff. They hard me. They hired me at 40000 a year, which was ungodly money. Oh, they hired you at? Yes. Holy shit, I thought it was That's like 1980s. Yeah. That's 1981. You know what I was making? I was making $9,500 a year. Because they hired me at 12 or 13. And I, I know Jeff, I paid a few months before at a convention in Lowell. And we have a mutual friend. I work with a friend who went to college with me. So I, I knew Jeff. So Jeff was in New York. Have a rough time trying to survive. Just marry the baby. He went to New York? So he. Massachusetts. Okay. Or Massachusetts. Okay, he's up there. In the that's area. Right. Sorry. Oh, that's well, a true story later. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he called me up. He said, You think those people would have hired me? I'm like, Sure, sure. They'll hire you. They're looking for a new artist. And so we had a phone call. I said, I saw you were watching. I asked for something. I said, That's for $40,000. And he's like, $40,000. So, so they. Flew Jeff down here, and I talked to Jim Roslaw when I told him about Jeff. And so, so I, they talked to Jeff and then flew him back. And, Jeff, and Jim come in to see me, and he said, uh, "Your friend's a really good artist." I said, yeah. He said, uh, "We're going to hire him." But I said, "He's." Uh, he said, "Is he used to make a bunch of money or anything?" I said, like, "Well, he's been having a rough way to go." I said, "He said, well, we asked him what his salary." What he was looking at is the salary stuff. I think I think Jim told me you asked for like eight or nine thousand a year, or something like that. <laughs> and I said, and, uh, I told him back for forty. And uh, so anyway, Jim, and Jim said, I said, well, what did Jim mean? So we give him seventeen, and he was pretty happy about that. You know, of course that doubled like all of what we making. And so then I think in about three months, they raised him up to our salary, mine, we kept it all about the same. But yeah, Jeff, he, he was happy to get a job. Oh, I was too. <laughs> when did Keith come on? Well, that, when we moved over on the other side here, and that would be like 83, I guess. I know uh, uh, Jim got his, got his, um, it would be like 83 or something. Yeah. I did in uh, 82 or 83, I did Red Dragon. Because you were doing the dragon lights. Uh -huh. I was yeah. starting to do, I was doing even the endless quest covers over yeah. the first yeah. time. So I was like, it was too late. Crazy. He did that. His first piece was that game world, I think. Yeah, I think one of his pieces. But that didn't Wasn't he the last one I Keith was, was only like five in there? Keith was like 20 months years old. Yeah. He was really young, and his color looked good. He was weak on drawing. Yes. And, uh, but his color skills were good. And. and Rothlop asked me, he said, what do you think? I said, I don't know. I said, he's awful young. And, yeah, he's and his drawing is weak. And, and Rothlop said, but look at his colors. They're pretty neat. Yeah, and so Rothlop Hardy. Uh -huh. and, um, and then he turned into a great artist. Oh, yeah, he did. He was like a sponge. Mm -hmm. You know, he just looked at what we were doing. We'd all, we were all older and been doing it longer. He just he hadn't been out of school that long. And so, man, he just absorbed everything. Just, and then, just a very few short years. It was, now, Rosloff was, a, Rosloff was a little frustrated in that he was a he was our art director, and he couldn't do art full time. But he was he was doing it. He would you know sporadically in between. Well, he, um, you know that's where he got some. The Dragonlance flow. I was sort of in charge of the visual look of Dragonlance, and I wanted to go with more of a Celtic type look. And nobody was doing Celtic stuff, and I sort of key into it early. And uh, I was trying to tell him what Celtic design looked like. Well, who was there? The young black guy who was head of management. I'm not man, head of uh, marketing and stuff and graphic design. He ended up, ended up going to work for uh, like, a, like, a, like a young guy. Anyway, he designed the first Dragonlance calendar. It looked like a Farm Bureau calendar. So it was an office thing. And I told Jim, I said, we can't go with this, you know. I said, this is horrible. And I'm like, well, I mean, that's their department. They're supposed to design stuff for us. And I'm like, well, this is horrible. And so I write one book at home that had some Celtic designs. And I bought it and I said, well, you just kind of design. You take the word Dragonlance and make it really nice with this Celtic design. 
And uh, so he took it home that night, jumped it. The next day, come back and had a piece of paper, exercise dragon like this, designed with the lion's So That's perfect. So I had to do the calendar cover. So I traced that dragon line logo here on my board. And then, uh, then I had the sides with the two little dragons. I painted that insert. And that was all on that first painting. It was all on the original right. painting. It's all on uh, one painting. And so, but they pulled that logo off. And those I knew those were a lot of the early stuff. But Jim designed the word dragon lines with the lines. Right. But he got it. I mean, I was trying to explain to him. He said, I think I got it. You know, I had a little round dice. And, yeah. Uh, so come next day, like, oh, I remember Don't when, uh, agree, right before they were going to send the paintings off to the calendar, yeah. you know, and you guys lined them up in the hall, all 12 of those dragon lights right. lined up in the hall. Oh my God. It was See them amazing. come to life, yeah. It was. It was just amazing. I remember one evening, Clyde, when we were doing the calendar, I said, whoever does the painting first of a character, we got to, yeah. they're going to be reoccurring, so ask Margaret and Tracy. And they give you an idea of what the characters look like. Well, and also the dragons. Yeah. Also the dragons. Did you agree that whoever did it first sets the tone? Yeah, sets the tone of that dragon. So, um, Clyde was the first one to paint Golden Moon and River. And he was working on a painting over there, and I knew he was doing. Every girl that Clyde painted was super sexy. I know where he's going. Uh, super sexy. I well, one day, and I was always after work, after hours, we were always working. And I was up there painting one, and you come walking in there by yourself. You're looking at the painting, so you get up the glass, and you look at the, you say, that's not gold moon. She started crying. <laughs> I looked up there like, what was it? Oh, it's gold moon, it's not a hooper or something. Like that. <laughs> she had spike heels on her. Oh, dear she God. She had some rags on her and sexy. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to tell them, but they're not on this <laughs> Well, she didn't so, have any pants on. She, no, had no, no, no. she didn't have any pants on. She didn't have the doe skin pants on. No, I put no, those that's on. That's how it became doe know. skin yeah. pants. It's like it was it was bare leg. And it's like well, well, she had, and I had to start on the first. She had to put pants on. I, and right after that, I had to put on the first Chronicles cover. And I so Clyde had already established that little flap with a little design in it, you know, with nothing cool. else. Well, yeah. You know, I and uh, so I was painting. I thought, well, I know Margaret cried about this. <laughs> So I put pants on her and uh -huh. a little bit more clothes on her, and Marty said, "That looks much better." So was that Dragons of Despair cover where he had the Black Dragon kiss hands coming over, and and Gold Moon had like the staff? Is that the first one Clyde did? No, she was no. changed up. That was Lorana. We tur he turned it into Lorana. Okay. And I think he put more clothes on her too. Yeah, he was oh, yeah. really, yeah. really yeah. sexy. Okay. I mean, all the girls it was like yeah. if Clyde painted a girl first, she was nude. Yeah. Basically. Well, I get least that. amount of clothing. Well, my wife said that about Clyde. Well, I was a little bit like hookers. Yeah. And, uh, That's because they Larry took him to that clown thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so <laughs> best 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 clown lodge. Yeah, he's you know, he's clown lodge. He's putting all his money into clown lodge. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you think about it, though, uh, a lot of fantasy. Oh, I love Clyde. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love Clyde. Yeah, yeah, fantasy was thing. just, uh, you know, like with Frazetta's stuff, it was always scantily yeah. clad. Yeah, and, and early on, fantasy was very risque. Sex soul, you know? My wife said that's what everybody thought. There was paperback covers in the 60s with a. Bare-breasted women oh, yeah. and, and sure. fantasy. I remember and Clyde was the first one I ever saw, though, that would put high heels, spike yes. heels on fantasy girl on. Well, I sort of try to base my fantasy like a historic type setting. Like be running through the hills and I'm like, I just don't think they had <laughs> spike heels back then, you know. Clyde made big leather boots with spike heels on them with big jewels across them. Yeah, Clyde always put the two dots on the jewels. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the, always uh, know the Queen of Darkness he did, and she had spike heels, but they were dragon claws. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. I, I thought that. that one, that was cool. So that, that one worked. Yeah. That worked. Yeah. It's like jeans. We, we fuss about, uh, <laughs> we would tease Clyde sometimes with signature. He's had a big C. I didn't know what it was for years. I'd I thought it was, was an S. Well, somebody thought it was, a, I think it was you, somebody said it was a fish. We <laughs> started teasing him about his fish. Well, that pissed him off. <laughs> I actually told him when he, he came here and I saw his signature, I go, oh, I go, I thought you were Stephen Hickman all this time. I thought there's a big S for Stephen. He's like, you got all in yeah, you know, Stephen Hickman. Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> Clyde was, Sorry, Clyde. You know. That was a little, he's more uptight. Mm -hmm. How many hours a week did you guys 
been in this room. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Been 60 I fell asleep at my desk once. Oh, I paint here till 9 or 10 o'clock at night and then go home. I'd go home and, and feed the kids and then come back here and write because we were writing Dragonlance on our own time. Yeah. Because we had our own job, so and we had a three-month deadline because they had that other author and then fired it. And uh, when when they decided Tracy and I should write the book, so I go home and feed the kids and come back and write. You know. Did you I ever was heard uh, that you were really secretly hard to write Dragonlance? That was it. No. Oh no, <laughs> that wasn't true. I don't think that's right because that was. She was well, I mean, Clyde. I'm uh, not Clyde, but uh, Harold and. Uh, and Tracy wanted someone that could, because Tracy wasn't writing, it was no, his idea. No, but Jean wanted, Jean Black, yeah. you know, she wanted, what they wanted was, you know, a big New York editor or writer, writer yeah. to do Dragonlance. But like Tracy always said, they um, no. they were going to, uh, going to compensate him by not paying him anything and not giving him the rights to his characters. Yeah. So of course, and they had contacted a few of the big agencies and they uh, just all laughed, you know. <laughs> you know, we're gonna give you, a thousand dollar advance and you don't get to keep the rights and they were just oh, you know. Yeah. So we did get this guy, he was, um, we had auditions and authors sent in manuscripts and we chose this guy. He just didn't get it, he just didn't get it. Um, the only character he really understood was Flint and so he had a lot of Flint and not much of anybody else. And so after about two months of this stuff coming in, we just, Tracy and I took one weekend and we wrote the prologue and the first five chapters. And I've never done, I've never written that much since, but the, we were just so into it. And we came back and we gave it to Gene Black, and we said, we think we should be the ones to write this book, because we love it, yeah. you know? And Jean said later, she told me years later, that she only read it because she didn't want to hurt our feelings. But she took it into her office, and then she read it, and Tracy and I sat in my cubicle and waited like about an hour, you know? It was, oh my God, <laughs> I, know, I know. And then Jean came and stood in the door and she said, wow. She said, this is what we're looking for. <laughs> yes, yes, we know it. But then we had a three month deadline because we had to meet his deadline and he'd already. Long most. And they let him keep the advance because they were afraid he was gonna sue. And, um, so. I remember you wrote the first three books and you said you're, y'all said you were done. No, I knew I was going to write the next three. Yeah, so oh, wanted to be the next three. three. Yeah. Okay, then, yeah. then, then they wanted three more and then they wanted three more and y'all was, yeah, was we, done. Yeah, was we done. were going, you know, we got an offer, you know, Bantam yeah. for the Dark Sword books and, and my God, they offered us more money than we'd ever <laughs> dreamed about. <laughs> Certainly more than we were yeah. getting at TSR. So. Yeah. Hmm. And I'd always freelance the whole time long. I know they would come around and have to sign papers. The only one I signed was early on, and it said, you couldn't freelance for competitors. Mm -hmm. And that made sense. Mm -hmm. So I never freelanced for a competitor. But I continued to freelance. I'd done covers for model car boxes, and Jeff did too. Uh, <laughs> well, Western Publishing, where I did Princess the Power L Sticker Fireworks. I did Man uh, Step. Uh, I died every yeah, well, Elvira, Elvira yeah. model car box, I well, did that. I, I know, I was freelance for everything, but nothing you that we You even freelance for, uh, Gygax had you freelance uh, the, the, uh, the teamwork one that you picked up from uh, his buddy, uh, the Red Dragon coming over the, uh, oh, the yeah, rock. Yeah. That was a freelance for Sears. For yeah, the, for but Sears. they called it, if you look at the old Sears catalog, they called them an advanced Dungeons and Dragons poster, but it wasn't, because you didn't do it for TSR. No. <laughs> no, <we didn't> for <laughs> Sears. Yeah. But Sears, Sears used it to market that, and, yeah. and uh, I, remember, I remember having that poster on my damn door. So. But I, and afterward, they started bringing paper around. We couldn't freelance for anybody. I had to uh -huh. sign it. And I never signed them. I would take it home and, and Lose forget it. about it. And they would say, well, where's your paper? And I was like, oh, I left it at home. <laughs> and I, the dog ate it or the cat. Or <laughs> and I never did bring them in. They'd probably forget about uh -huh. it. And so I, I never did sign one. But I never did any direct competition up until I was doing y'all's covers. I do then. Mm -hmm. I do it. Mm -hmm. So did TSR at that time fancy themselves as publishers, like in the book space? No, we were. I mean, well, I mean we were, but, but you know, I always kind of looked at that as like an offshoot of the core games, right? Oh, yeah. Um, it was mm -hmm. a support. But then it got so the books were making more money. Making games. Really? Games. Really? I mean, yeah. really. And the Endless yeah. Quest books, those first six that Rose Estes did, those were huge. Yeah. Those yeah. sold. Yeah, I, I don't know that. how. I did many. the covers. I think the first. Yeah, one, so. uh, and that's that's what really launched them into the business. And then Dragonlance was the first adult 
Yeah, well, I got a chance to see a lot of the financials when I was here. Don't ask me why. Oh, at, the, at the particular time, uh, novels were 60% of the income. Mm -hmm. of the company. Really? Yeah, 60 versus oh, wow. 40 for role playing. And traditionally, for Dragonlance, the money was always in the novels. Mm -hmm. yeah. I suppose that makes sense, though, because think about it. With the rule books, you buy your one copy of the rule book, you buy your new model, but mm -hmm. yeah, novels, it's a new novel. Mm -hmm. you know. Remember when uh, we had those big company meetings? Questions. And I remember we had this new marketing guy, Chicago, and all he marketed was refrigerators. <laughs> and he was our marketing man. And his philosophy is we're not going to do anything new, we'll let other companies do something new and we'll do it better. And I'm like, <laughs> I found this out, I'm like going nuts. And we toured around one time and, not the innovators. and he come into the art department and I uh, asked him, I said, Do you ever play D&D? &D? No. Do you ever going to play it? Well, how in the world do you market something you don't even know anything about? And he said, well, that's, that's not important. I'm like, well, it looks to me like that'd be important. And well, Lehman so, was the same way. Lehman was like, ah, you know, it's well, the same we, as selling sneakers. It's we had no one of these big uh, <laughs> company meetings, and Mike was basically saying that they felt that fantasy was basically dying off, and, uh, and that uh, we were going to go in another direction. I raised my hand. He always hated me to but I ask anything. What are they going to do? Fire me? That's the most I can do. I'm like, so D and D and Dragonlance is leading everything and making all the money in, and fantasy's dead. Uh, uh -huh. And like, you know, where did you get this from? Your marketing department, which they have. And uh, the guy that never played D and D never hoped to. And then I'm like, and then Mike, he talked to me later. He said, Why don't you quit asking some of these questions like this in front of everybody? I said, Well, it's the truth, and we all know. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know this is stupid directions you're going in. You're going to lose this tons of money. And they, that's when they started making all my children gain. Yeah. 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 Lost yeah. tons yeah. of money. Yeah. 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 And we had spies in every section and shipping. We knew how much was sent, was, was purchased throughout the United States a month. And the, the, those endless quest books for girls, which I bitch about, I'd do the covers for them. Heart quest. I think one month nationwide we sold four. <laughs> I know. We found that out through shipping. How many they sell? Yeah, that we sold good, four in the whole idea. month. For, uh, that's you know, a good idea. Worldwide. That was Gene's idea. Well, I said, you know, at that time, girls, the girls were not little fantasy. Not, God, they, they were in the cheerleading. They probably stuff. do better. Now, now, yeah, now they do, oh, absolutely, yeah. but not Harry uh, Potter and I'm mm -hmm. sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. And if you could not remember, kind of they had figures or dolls involved. Random in House, they had a Random House was coming through, and Keith, Random House, Kevin yeah. Bloom was showing him around, and I was painting the first Hot Quest book, you know, and and Kevin was like explaining how he was going to sell bajillions to all the young girls in America, and I was like, oh, we don't know what that is. And of course, they would uh, order like. 180,000 copies of them, and then they'd have to destroy the rest or whatever. They returned them. They yeah, they returned them. Return 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 but anyway, the, that we destroyed them. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, but yeah, they, but except Dragonlance, like, and then they only ordered. Well, they didn't take a genius to figure out what he's going to sell. I don't think they knew. Well, you know, Random House didn't think it was going to sell. They didn't even tell any of their people about it, their salespeople so, about it. And so I think they did. They printed. 30,000 because that was the short that was shortest the shortest run. print run they could get was 30,000. Yeah, probably so 30. Oh. <laughs> it was yeah. And then, 30 books. Then well, that makes those books valuable. Oh, right. 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 Oh, that's that was 30, Are they valuable cuz there was oh, yeah. something and then that four or five perfect. months after it came out that hit the New York Times the first book hit the New York Times so yeah. as a write in. And remember they were going to cancel it. Oh, I know. Uh, Tracy got Tracy has to put his suit on and go talk. <laughs> Tracy his suit like, oh, you better try to save Dragon Lance. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's too bad this isn't being done as a seminar over at the uh, convention. Yeah.